July 2023 video horoscopes for the 12 signs with me Lada from astrolada.com I'm so excited July we have some of the most karmic configuration in the sky Pluto which is considered the planet that governs the evolution of the soul and the evolutionary path and the most karmic and fatal and fated events will square the karmic nodes which are considered the the, the north node is the true north of the soul the new karma soul has to create the south node is the past karma soul has to create so some very pivotal fated karmic events will happen like the universe is no longer waiting for you to make up your mind it's giving you consequences of your actions and is realigning you to the path that is most appropriate for your soul whether you are ready or no so some events that i'll say for each time what these events will be will trigger a specific big consciousness shift and realigning of your karmic direction and the karmic path in life for your soul during the next month july and into august and we'll speak what events this can be for each one of you but something pivotal very important is happening guys and venus is turning retrograde uh, retrograde but helping this process with a trine so i'm very excited for this month and before i start nikola stojanovic my past teacher the late nikola stojanovic uh, his books are still not out his daughter is trying to publish them he's the most genius astrologist who ever lived <laughs> but we're releasing all his courses nine courses for a discounted price or you can choose just three of his courses in a package and get them this is part of my latest top picks that continues the whole uh, till October 2023 where I recommend you the best astrology courses and the themes and Nikola Stojanovic is for everything I mean <laughs> if you want to do astrology like a magician uh, like a psychic almost check out those courses I cannot recommend them enough and of course I do Q&A live once per month for each group uh, till October if you have questions for every new package of course I recommend so thank you let's begin july pisces sun moon arising july 2023 pisces the north and south node the two karmic points of the moon are moving into your second and eighth houses wherever the north node goes we get filled up with more passion desire uh, laser like focus and vision for a little bit even if it's not something we pay attention to so much in our life for a little bit we might get a little bit obsessed and that's good because we need to explore different areas of our lives so they're not all neglected and for a little bit it will be for a year and a half it will be in your second house Pisces especially if it's your ascendant in Pisces to a lesser degree sun or moon as well but there can be a lot of focus on material and financial independence and stability and the north node there asks you to explore to experiment to even take risks when it comes to that of course don't be too rash because sometimes north node can get entangled in get rich quick schemes because north node is impatient influence so is aries north node is the, the the mythology of it is that it was a demon and it wanted to become a god but it didn't want to pass through years of evolution billions of years and being good so it tricked the gods and drank the juice of immortality and became a god so rahu gets what it wants yes because it has a strong desire but not always in the most lawful ways and sometimes through tr trickery so just one warning yes Raku in the second house can make you become more financially stable richer definitely can expand your resources but you have to be aware that it can uh, not to do it in illegal ways be careful or not to get tricked into get rich quick schemes into pyramids of any sort that's the only danger of the north node in the second house especially be cautious around that for that for the next couple of months because pluto will also square the north node Rahu in your second house and pluto can have a little bit of a manipulative influence as well but otherwise over the next year and a half i believe that you will come up with new ideas and new initiatives that areas will help you because the north node your second house of money is in areas will activate you into pursuing into going after of course just in, indeed the north node can make you to double your income triple it faster than normal that happens i've seen it many times but somehow you have to rely on yourself 
uh, rather than involving others so much because the south node is in the eighth house which is other people's resources other people's talents and finances uh, it doesn't mean like don't receive any help or whatever and <laughs> be careful it, it just means that somehow you might for example your soul's purpose and goal for the next year and a half might be to explore what it is to be self-reliant on your own resources on your talents and skills only so for example you might how it might play out it might lose you might lose some source of income um, that is that some source of income that comes to you from a partner from government or from another source uh, outside of some source of support so you are asked to find out your own resourcefulness here the Rahu in the second house to figure out how to do it through your own talents through your own uh, ideas and um, relying on yourself so often this is a great transit to become financially independent even in a marriage or in a business partnership or for yourself and to explore different sources of finances and the north node loves diversity loves to try things that are new that involve new technologies that involve more than one streams of income as well and of course Aries is also very innovative sign of entrepreneurship so some of you they can be a big boost in growth by starting some business that you know can increase their wealth and their value others can uh, take some certain investments or initiatives that can play out uh, that might feel even a little bit more risky I cannot promise you what the final result will be the North Node can destabilize a lot of things as well but it's the energy that asks you to try something new experiment you know and and that will be even if the results are usually North Node gains you, gives you something um, but sorry <laughs> um, funny enough I just received a message that uh, don't forget to give your to donate there are, there are something <laughs> and the second house is possessions with the North Node if you want good positive results there is a remedy give to others more and South Node is about letting go sacrificing something eight houses other people so that's very much the position of donate to someone south note in the eighth house let go of something and give to another who is in more need so that's a good way as well as a remedy uh, if you're kind of feeling in a situation especially initially where there is uncertainty financially so donate give <laughs> that's a good reminder i didn't think of that but nothing synchronicities always work great um, and then your own finances can stabilize and strengthen as well uh, but also you might need to end up and release some reliance on some reliable source of income that comes to you from another sort of area but uh, the south node in the eighth house has liberating influence south node is emptying it's the tail of the dragon eighth house is our psychological traumas eighth house is a moksha house of liberation the south node is a moksha energy too moksha energy can liberate you from some traumatic feelings can liberate you from emotional attachments that are toxic and painful that you've been stuck in maybe for many years psychologically emotionally and so this liberates you emotionally from attachments while the north node can create new karma for you and karma can be good by getting you entangled with new worldly material responsibilities uh and duties with some new getting care, the north node in the second house likes to take care and have space to dedicate passion and mental head space and energy into material practical everyday things it will make a trine to your career house to your work house so it's an advancement in those areas that the north node can really give you while releasing you from certain deep emotional entanglements that are keeping your all energy uh, you know kind of focus on dealing with some emotional issues on betrayals or dramas the psychological emotional dramas or fighting with your own inner demons with your internal battles and struggles and the south node wants to empty that to give you freedom there from your so you, so you might feel in the spirit at certain point like a huge release of toxic emotional energy and you might feel emotionally energetically lighter 
in that free space for you to focus on more practical material down to earth things that you can develop wonderfully because the North Node developed things materially, moves them forward. All right, and that can be a boost to your self-worth as well, especially releasing a lot of uh, emotional pent-up luggage with the South Node in the 8th house. Uh, and well, this North Node in the second house can allow you to see, uh, to sometimes even enhance too much what you're worth. But I've seen people rise their prices, uh, get more money uh, because they evaluate themselves higher and they receive higher payment or they rise their own prices and so on. And with the South Node in the eighth house, just be a bit more careful with investments. If you're investing, say, in mutual funds and hedge funds if in stock market or if you're investing in uh, because there might be losses through partners or your partner can start making less money for example or if you're investing say in pension funds whatever there can be some losses there as well so if you try to invest in something try to invest in more second house things that's more tangible you can put your hands on it rather than mutual big funds and so on um, then this axis is squared the whole July by Pluto in your 11th house of gains and income, <laughs> not the financial area. Um, so it's the, these are the karmic, the most karmic planets, the South Node, the North Node, the past karma, the future karma that you're creating. And Pluto is the other most karmic planet that shows you the evolution of your soul. So when we have the three most karmic points in evolutionary astrology aligning in the most powerful position possible actually they were aligned together in 2020 in february and april <laughs> the south node was aligned with pluto <laughs> and opposite the north node well now we have kind of a uh, starting to see the results of that collectively but on a personal level it's a pivotal decisive moment for your fate a pivotal decisive moment for the evolution of your soul and uh, pluto can be ruthless pluto doesn't care this is your soul it doesn't care what you personally desire pluto will align your soul to the vibration it's supposed to be to the path it's supposed to be and sometimes because it's hard aspects it can feel like wow that's ruthless or that's it's a bit like fatalistic energy or you might not feel ready for it but the universe is not waiting for you anymore and the universe is saying something like now it has to happen it's culminated to a point it cannot you know it, the the rails need to shift you need to shift to the to the right alignment whether you want it or not ultimately remember it's for the highest good of your soul but it can come to you as a some crisis situation or as a, some situation that you it's been building up and now it explodes like a volcano and it feels fated and it feels intense or fatal no, not for your life it doesn't directly affect your sign but where can and what can be the trigger for this big realignment of your fate well it can be the second or the eighth house one of the points of this configuration so personal finances personal security or secrets other eighth houses secrets psychological changes other people's finances other people's support something that's happening under the surface anything to do with inheritance death birth so some important events can trigger this change of your destiny and the path of the evolution of your soul uh, connected to second house is also family stability or eighth house uh, psychological per uh, transformations big changes life death circumstances taxes insurances inheritances but Pluto might be the pivotal planet triggering all this and it's in the 11th house. It's some big event can happen or important event in your social environment uh, as a feedback from society in regards to your gains and income or in regards to your long-term goals that basically realigns you into a different evolutionary path and goals for you. So even if there's some crisis there, there'll be some realignments and big change with uh, even with friendship, social environment, who is in your life as well. The 11th house is very social. But that uh, overall realigns your whole path. 
and Venus is helping this whole process Venus with a trine from the sixth house to the north node in your second house the whole month of July and into August and sextile into the south node so this psychological transformation and evolutionary jump that is happening even if it's stressful Venus is helping you what is helping you well Venus from the sixth house might be a good workout routine and grounding uh, healing habits that you introduce into your life like uh, nutrition better nutrition better health healthy lifestyle it can be also someone who is support of a practical nature a friend who is there for you practically to give you help uh, if things are changing in your life to help you there you know with more practical rather than emotional psychological advice but still that is great uh, it can be also your work actually those evolutionary changes that are happening from the nodes that can benefit your job and your work Venus in the sixth house or your job can keep you sane through those changes so it can be very good influence on your career development after that or on your situation at employment and work or it can be even something to do with your health Venus in the ten in the sixth house uh, that it whatever changes happen that you make that it leads to the trying to Venus to good healthy habits and healthier routines in your life um, but Venus will go retrograde in your sixth house from the 22nd of July and will stay retrograde of September the beginning so you're gonna have some some of you might have some old work project come to you that has to be finished to be improved to be fixed to be edited improved made better if you work in any venus career that can be a great time for your job beauty industry art music consulting uh, contract uh, negotiation uh, entertainment luxury industry it can be a period where your work really benefits from this long stay of Venus in the sixth house, even the retrograde period. Retrograde period indicates three times more efforts, but when it turns direct in September, you have three times better re uh, results. So no matter what your career is actually, Venus in the sixth house can improve your work, can be make it a source of pleasure, pride, uh, enjoyment as well you can beautify and decide that oh i want my environment to be more attractive around me and i want to beautify it and six house is about cleaning rearrangement or even your office space venus is about beauty you can do something there or make and make the environment more harmonious at your work uh, it's about some old projects coming to be re-examined and in some extreme cases the sixth house is your work profession sometimes employment some of you might rethink if am i on the right track uh, and if you make a change in some way that will be for the best because venus whatever changes venus does in the house it passes even with a retrograde period it feels like the right decision it's done with good evaluation and retrospection and uh, analysis it doesn't feel rushed it doesn't feel you know but it, it's gonna be uh, Venus yes while it's retrograde will square Uranus uh, so there might be some shifts and changes definitely in your work environment during the whole retrograde period where with some innovations unexpected so the, when Venus starts going retrograde in the sixth house sixth house like usually likes to have everything planned knows where what's happening well if you have things planned usually they a bit like Mercury retrograde period you might be surprised uh, some surprises might be thrown at you for a month and a half for the 40 days Venus is retrograde in your daily routine so you have to be more flexible there as well and Venus there can really ask you to reevaluate your health habits when it's retrograde it's like is what I'm eating healthy for you maybe I should ask for a second opinion for a diagnosis six house rules doctors and diagnosis retrograde Venus says uh, let me try for another expert another opinion or maybe change my medicine um, or Venus retrograde there can ask you like to examine your diet your work, health routines and because Venus whatever Venus is we really love that you can really start enjoying say maybe adding a couple of smoothies per week adding in some healthier habits and a retrograde planet allows you to see how something feels from a different perspective rather than to be stuck in doing things the same way 
Uh, so gives you an alternative perspective. So hopefully Venus can give you an alternative perspective of how your health can be in your health routines and you can start changing something there. So there you go, Pisces. Hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.